Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are in Gerrard's Cross in uh, north of London, in the Stockbroker Belt, uh, and it's the we're at the Internet of Retail events, and I'm talking with Brett Bonner, who is the Vice President of R&D at Kroger. Brett, welcome. Good to good to meet you. We've had a good chat off camera. Tell us first of all about Kroger, because we're in London and Kroger's in the States. Well, Kroger is one of the world's largest supermarket chains. We operate over 2,700 uh, supermarkets. We also are a large manufacturer. We produce about $30 billion of our own private label product. And uh, it's quite an enterprise. I mean, from trucks and stores and manufacturing facilities, it's a really rich and fertile ground for technologies like the Internet of Things. Great. Let's get straight into the Internet of Things then, and the Internet of Retail. What impact is IoT having on the retail industry and your retail industry in particular right now? Kroger was a very early supporter of the Internet of Things. For instance, maybe six or seven years ago, I joined the Zigbee Board of Directors and very quickly a manager on, on my team, John Osborne, became the vice chairman and he's now serving his second term as the chairman of the Zigbee Alliance. And we've been very fortunate to implement a number of Internet of Things applications designed by Kroger using the Zigbee profile. And our most famous to date is our temperature monitoring system. It's called Fast Alerts for Food at Safe Temperature. And what it's designed to do is improve the quality of food for our shoppers, prevent loss from refrigeration breakdowns, not too hot, not too cold, just right. And uh, I think we're seeing some great applications out of that, great gains, customer satisfaction, et cetera. As far as Kroger is concerned, you ha obviously have, a poli you have policies and a strategy for the Internet of Retail. Um, what will you get from it? What is it and what will you get from it? And above all, and you've just covered this in, in, in a little way, but what do your customers get out of it as well? Great question. Um, well, at Kroger, we're all about the shopper and the shopper's experience. And so if, you know, we can use the Internet of Things in the store to help them shop more effectively, not forget the items, etc., cetera, um, that's something that we're going to diligently try to install. In our particular case, we've actually designed handheld shoppers, for instance, and those shoppers are not the typical Wi-Fi, very expensive shoppers you see, mm. but they look a lot like it. And these particular devices show an accurate running total while you shop and enables you to scan, bag, and go. Uh, because it's an Internet of Things application, it checks to make sure that uh, loss is not occurring inappropriately. It's just a great experience for the shopper. The shoppers that have tried it and use it just love it. We've got other ones as well coming up, you know, lost your cart, we can find it for you. <laughs> Right, okay. I wouldn't have thought of that one, I must admit. You talked about the benefits, Brett. What about the pitfalls? You must have, you must have seen a few in your time. And, and putting, putting the Internet of Retail together, you have the policy for it, you know how you're doing it. What about the, what about the, the mistakes, the possible pitfalls you can fall into? Well, because we are a standards-based organization, we are religiously following the Zigbee spec, we're following Wi-Fi, we follow whatever spec that's out there, we've actually avoided the pitfalls. Well done. Um, I, th I think so. I, I think that's one of the reasons we, we get in early, we design the specs, we get things certified by UL, FCC, CE, OMVIF, all the standard agencies. And, you know, once you go through those types of certifications, you're pretty well certain everything's going to work as planned and designed. We also simulate this this equipment and its environment a great deal before we ever actually even design it. And that type of discrete event simulation and things also yields benefits. We know where we're going, we know what we want to do, we have the support of senior management, and that yields to a successful conclusion. How has it been introducing the Internet of Things at Kroger? 
Has it been an easy experience or have you found very often in large organisations, particularly when they're very hierarchical, you can get a resi an inbuilt resistance to the, the corporate culture? We don't want to change anything really. You know, that's, again, a great question. Um, I think in our particular case, Kroger has been an innovator and will be an innovator. So we don't necessarily have those same negative or organizational dynamics that other firms might. Now we also have a very forward-leaning executive management. And especially if we can craft a business case around the shopper, and even more about the health, safety, and welfare of a shopper, they're all in. And I'm so proud of our company that our first really big Internet of Things application, and I mean, we're done. We've installed it in all 2,700 plus supermarkets. I mean, so, right. so we are an Internet of Things leader. Yeah. Was all about food safety. And, and that's time that we used to spend checking freezers and things like that. Now we can spend with a shopper. And that's, that's a double whammy, sure. right? First mm -hmm. off, not well, it was productive work. It was important work. But now we've been able to automate that work. And the company is spending that time now with the shopper. So that's just really a great thing to work with executives that have that kind of vision. Can we move on and talk about technology? Off camera, we were talking before, you are a technologist. I believe you've got 23 patents? In the U.S., and, you know, they tend to multiply outside the U.S. Well, there you go. That's pretty impressive in itself. But let's talk about the technology. We hear at the moment lots and lots of talk about ecosystems. Um, what do you think is the Internet of Retail ecosystem? What does it look like? How does it work? Well, we actually have a plan that we will be presenting. Uh, we call it retail site intelligence. And it, it, it is a, a foundational technology that operates holistically and synergistically. And we've combined different kind of technologies. For instance, we took power over ethernet and we put video on that particular LAN that technology, but that video system also has numerous gateways to the Internet of Things. And so as we were deploying necessary video surveillance systems and designing those that are far more cost effective than what we could have done otherwise, we were also building the foundation for the Internet of Things. And what that means is subsequent enhancements are that much cheaper. They are not siloed systems. They're foundational. They work together synergistically. When you are installing one, you're actually laying the capabilities to exercise and, and utilize other technologies. And so, you know, we took that approach from a very early basis and I think it's going to pay great dividends in the future. Okay, thank you. How about the equipment, the kit you buy for the Internet of Things, the Internet of Retail. Do you source it from traditional service providers, you know, likes of Verizon and AT&T and part or wherever it may be, or do you buy package solutions from systems integrators? Do you do it yourself, or do you go to sort of sector-specific providers and people who provide smart shelving, that kind of thing? We do it ourselves. Do you? We are a very interesting retailer in that the group I'm privileged to run, the Kroger company lets me run it, is uh, a hardcore engineering group. So we actually design the electronics, the circuit boards, we injection mold the plastics. I mean, we'll use partners to do that. We design the optics, um, we test it. So uh, it's, it's quite an integrated operation with, with what we do. And, and that lets us build things that aren't on the market. It lets us build in great features that otherwise, you know, if you're just trying to integrate something that's commonly sure. available, wouldn't yeah. be there. And this fits with the do-it-yourself of many of our shoppers. I mean, they bake their own cakes, right? Yeah. And yeah. there's, you know, I, I, I jokingly say there's not a lot of difference between silicon chips and, and <laughs> potato chips, except there's less liability with a silicon chip. So, you know, the Kroger company has 130 years of of incredible manufacturing experience. We were the first supermarket, this is so 
interesting to note to put a bakery in with dry goods. Really? And and yeah. so, you know, we've always done things very innovatively and this is just a continuation of that. Makes supermarkets smell good. Sure does. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Okay, thank you. What about partnerships then, Brett? What we've seen in telecommunications, communications in general really, over the recent years is that companies that in the past would have been at one another's throats as competitors very often collaborate on big projects. Do you have partnerships and collaborators outside of Kroger who are working with you? Great question. Um, we hope to have more partners and collaborators. Uh, again, it's just like some far-thinking automotive companies didn't want to hold seat belts technology <laughs> to themselves. We don't want to hold our temperature monitoring technologies to ourselves as well. So we've prepared what we call box kits for a number of retailers so they can start experimenting with Internet of Things technology as well. And we want to lead in safety. In many cases, our shoppers are their shoppers. And if we can save our shoppers' time, the whole industry wins. If we can improve their health, the whole industry wins. And again, uh, I think we have far-reaching executives to look at it that way. So I, I have to really thank my lucky stars for ending up in that type of environment. It's great for an inventor like my team and myself to have that type of support. Last question to you, Brett. What do you think of the role of the traditional network operators and communications carriers in all this? You have a lot of data, huge amounts of data that has to go from one place to another, it has to be sliced and diced, it has to be, it has to be stored and manipulated and so on and so forth. Um, many of the big network and broadband service providers have huge uh, networks, solid networks have been there for a long time. They're spending m massive amounts of money on virtualizing them, SDN, NFE, the cloud, everything else. Um, and they also have quite a lot of, through telematics and that sort of thing, they've got quite a lot of expertise and experience in IoT already. I've spoken to a lot of people about this, and some say, yeah, they really have a part to play, and others say, well, we're not sure whether they do really, because we're a bit scared of being locked into a particular carrier and then not being able to escape later. What's Kroger's view on that? Well, I think that's another excellent question. Um, again, if we follow standards, we're able to compete and trade off one capability against another. Yeah. And actually those standards will make us all better competitors. So as long as, again, we're using broadband and things like that and we can switch between particular carriers, which we, we will be able to, um, I think it's just a, a great opportunity for them. And I'll go further. Uh, where we used to deploy, uh, let's just call them data centers and supermarkets, and trust me, they're data centers, we're now starting to move more and more of that to the cloud. As security of the cloud improves, we're able to move that. Yeah. Uh, my particular executive I work for, who's won a number of CIO awards, uh, he calls that thin at the edge. And so in that particular respect, I think you're going to find cloud services, you're going to find a lot of broadband carriers and stuff will have an increasing role to play. Good. Very, very interesting. And nice to hear somebody talking about standards in all this because there's been a lot of debate about how important standards are, be, are going to be to the Internet of Things and whether they're real, or whether there are enough of them, or whether there are too many. So it's fascinating to hear you talk about that. So Brett Bonner, thanks very much indeed. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.